Hey, this is Bill Raymond, and welcome to this video on working with Jekyll Data. This is part one in a three-part series. Let's get started. If you have ever built a website, you know the value of having a database in the back end. Whether it's to list all of your products and services, create your own custom navigation menus, or read the latest posts from a blog. You can do all of that with Jekyll, but in its own special Jekyll way. I created this three-part video series to walk you through how to work with data in Jekyll. In this very first video, it's all slides where I cover the major topics of how you work with data in Jekyll, and then the other two videos are all demos. There are two types of data in Jekyll. One is the built-in data, and the second is custom data that you create. Let's first talk about built-in data. And there's three primary data types. The first is a post. And this is where you list all of your posts. When you create a blog post on Jekyll, you create a file. And that file has these three dashes at the top and bottom of the header area. And this lists out, for example, the layout that you're using, post being a blog post the title, the date, categories, other kind of metadata information relating to your blog post, and then you actually have the content. So you can go into Jekyll and say, show me all posts that have the title of this and we're in the date range of that. So this is really nice because it's already built into Jekyll. You don't need to create your own data file that lists out all your blog content you can just start querying it right away. Just like posts, you can also have pages. Of course, a post is more like, a blog post is more like an article that you wrote, where a page is maybe more static. It says, you know, here's our list of services, here's how to contact us, whatever the case may be. But you can still use built-in querying using Jekyll uh, without having to create your own database of pages. You can just say for all the pages on my site, find the one titled contact us, and you can get that information programmatically. The third primary Jekyll built-in data that you could use is the underscore config.yml file. You are probably familiar with this if you've ever created a Jekyll site, because you have to go in and configure the base URL and the URL if you ever want it to work outside your personal computer's desktop system and you wanted to for example, make it public. So it's pretty straightforward. You have a, a value, I'm sorry, an item, okay, that's called theme, and then you have the value for what that represents. So here I'm using the minima theme. I also have two plugins installed. Here's the base URL is slash blog, and the URL is https colon slash slash mysite.com. So you can see that the YML file, YAML file, is essentially just a little data file, and you can access that uh, anywhere you want in your Jekyll site, and it's specifically for the Jekyll configs. Before I get into showing you custom data, I just want to let you know, you can basically kind of create almost any type of data that you want. I'm going to show you examples of creating a custom navigation menu as a data file, which is pretty popular to do in Jekyll, but you know, this is just an example. If you want to create your own data files, what you'll do is go to your site's folder at the root and create a new folder called underscore data. And in there, you can put any number of files. And there's certain data files that Jekyll supports. I'm gonna walk you through those now. The first is a comma separated variable file. This is a pretty old school format that I don't necessarily recommend, primarily because it's hard to read and it's always prone to error. Uh, there's so many files out there where you just don't get the comma right or there's a comma inside of the text and doesn't get read properly. So I don't necessarily recommend it, but I am gonna walk you through it. And you can see here, the first line of our text file, our CSV text file says nav comma URL. These are the titles for our data. And so now the first nav is called home and the second nav is called about. And of course we said they're separated by commas 
And so the first URL is slash index.html, and the second URL is slash about.html. Similar to a CSV file, you have a TSV file, and that is a tab-separated variable. So now you can see we have nav with a tab, and then there's a URL. And that's our title again. And then down here we have the first nav is home, and we know that the URL is slash index.html because there's a tab after the word home. This isn't a space, this is actually a tab that you press on your keyboard. And so you can see the layout is still the same way. The next data format that Jekyll provides support for is JSON. Now if you're familiar with JSON, it's essentially putting these brackets in just the right places to lay out how your data gets represented. For example, we have this navs item, and inside the navs item, we have two other items, so two data elements. There's the title for home with a URL for, for that, and then we have the title for about with the URL for that. You can see that this title and URL here are inside of brackets, and there's a comma after this one to put the other data inside of brackets. And then we just close that all out with solid brackets and ending, ending squirrely brackets. Now, I actually like the JSON format. I've used it before when I've developed software. However, what I found with Jekyll is that sometimes it's a little bit harder to read. Just because I'm using Visual Studio Code, there might be some cool extensions that make it easier to read, but I've always had problems trying to C and these commas, and I've constantly, you know, where do I put the comma? Do I put it at the right places? And then you can see this comma next to the squirrely bracket. It's actually kind of hard to see. So I've found that using this, uh, while it's something I'm familiar with, still is a little bit hard to read and update. So if you're familiar with JSON, use it. Um, you're probably going to like the next data format better. The last data type that Jekyll supports, at least as of the creation of this video, is a YAML file. Now you'll remember the YAML file, that's actually the config file, the underscore config.yml file that's at the root of your Jekyll folder. Well, you can also create your own YAML files that contain your own data. And so you can see here, I have a nav.yaml file, and in there I have a number of navigation items, and you can see it's all laid out pretty nicely. If you take a look at these four different options, I like nav.yaml the most. I like using the YML format. Now, some of my site I actually created with JSON, and at some point I'll probably go back and use the YAML format. And I really wish that I did, because I spent a lot of time just um, getting things right with my JSON files. Now, here's what I will say, though. If you have a site that lists out, let's say, products, and someone sending you the format of those products in CSV format, probably best to just use the CSV type. That way you can just copy and paste, import the, the data into your Jekyll file, into your Jekyll um, data folder, rather, and be done with it, rather than trying to transform your data from one format to another. So it's all something that you'll want to think about. Start playing with them and see which one is best for you. This is the last slide before we go into demos, but I did just want to point something out. YAML is used throughout Jekyll. It's actually used in those posts and pages. These three dashes here that are at the header of most pages inside of Jekyll, this is just YAML data. So you can create your own data even in posts and pages. Let's say that, for example, you wanted to create another piece of metadata for your blog posts. And it was just like, maybe, you, maybe you're a travel blogger, so you just want to create a new uh, data element called uh, region. And then inside of that region, you type North America. And now that's data that you can query on inside of Jekyll. So data is the front matter that appears at, with, within the three dashes at the top of a page. And then also, it is a file in and of itself. Thank you for watching this video. If you want more like this, please like, comment, and click the bell to support my channel.